All this chicken and king talk swelling around out there. It's got me really fired up. Here today, gone tomorrow. This is the fate of new product launches from the top fast food companies that didn't meet with the public's approval, even after millions of dollars spent in advertising. But although some of these bold culinary inventions attain mythical following among the globe's masses, somehow they still manage to become epic failures. So here, at last, are your top 10 fast food failures of all time. He looks like Dwayne. Dwayne Wade? I get that a lot. Krispy Kreme fails in Canada. Surprise! Snow or no snow, the Canadian market is definitely Krispy Kreme's Achilles heel. That old-fashioned, crispy, and heavenly sweet donut that literally melts in your mouth definitely caught fire everywhere it went. Unfortunately, not in Canada. And to be specific about it, not in the province of Ontario. Here, Krispy Kreme was confident to open up stores way back in 2001, but it was confronted with a young population waking up to the dangers posed by having too much sugar in the diet. The stores quickly closed shop and sent Krispy Kreme crew packing their bags. By January 2005, according to CBC News, six of 18 Krispy Kreme stores had closed due to sagging demand. Of course, Canadian sweet tooth loyalists continue to play hardball. You can't hurt these feelings. Nothing hurts me. After all, many Canadians have been used to the Tim Hortons coffee double-double and the sinful donuts as well. However, all things considered, it was a losing battle. On April 15, 2005, Cream Co. Inc., the company that brought the American legend north of the border, had filed for bankruptcy protection. And it was a point of no return from there. The overall fascination for Krispy Kreme, however, would prove to be short-lived, if not non-existent. The hard lesson is definitely a sobering message for America's legendary fast food companies. As Sears, one of America's dominant fashion retailers, and Target have learned, Canadian markets are a totally different animal. If you haven't joined our notification squad yet, what are you waiting for? Show us some love and slam that subscribe button and click that bell. We got a craving! Mick Lobster Roll and other McDonald's fast food sins. Dial 911, it's the Lobster Squad. For those of you who were born yesterday, you'd think that Mick Lobster, Mick Spaghetti, Mick Pizza, Mick Hot Dog, Arch Deluxe Burger, Mighty Wings, Mick Lean Deluxe, McDonald's Fajitas, or even for that matter, the Mick DLT are nothing but urban legends. In truth, however, all these fast food inventions were once served on the dining tables or off the drive throughs of the biggest fast fast food chain of America. Yep, even McDonald's can fail and can do so in epic fashion. No one is exempt from the failure syndrome and definitely not even if you spent close to a billion US dollars in market research or advertising. Consumer behavior is simply too hard to predict even with the most sophisticated or the most modern market barometers. So are you looking right now with your eyes wide open at the sheer number of Mickey D's epic fails? Don't blame the big yellow arch. Rather, praise it for the company's bravery and tenacity against all odds. But they'll never take all freedom! Not everything is a fail, though, as far as McLobster is concerned. For instance, there are isolated reports that in Halifax, the lobster town of the Canadian Maritimes province, McLobster is still served during summer. This is understandable since seafood is one of the city's top exports. So it's only fitting for a sandwich overflowing with lobster chops to be offered whenever possible. Unfortunately, according to discriminating Halifax lobster eaters, they'd rather stay away from the McLobster because there's no real lobster in there. We are not eating that. McDonald's Hula Burger and Mick Salad Shakers. And what are you doing? Nothing much. Just making the best burger ever. The McDonald's Hula Burger of the 1960s was an honest-to-goodness burger with nary a patty but a generous slice of pineapple instead. And according to some, this fast food concoction was actually a big hit during Holy Week or for seniors on a restricted diet. But the real controversy is whether or not the Hula Burger was really all fruit and no hamburger patty. It was introduced by Ray Kroc to McDonald's in the 1960s to American Catholics practicing Good Friday meat abstinence. And yet, we'd seen some pictures of the burger sporting some beef patty at times. So the hula burger really isn't as innocent as it seems. Introducing healthier meal alternatives for a fast food behemoth isn't just hypocrisy. It's a matter of survival in this day and age of rabid competition. To illustrate, had McDonald's stopped innovating, it could have gone down by now. So thank you, Mickey D's, for bringing mixed salad shakers into the world even when the idea became unpopular. It's not rocket science to understand the wisdom of putting salad in transparent plastic cups. This rocket proves nothing. 
That makes it easy to add the sauce or sauces and shake that salad, of course. But somehow, the concept just didn't really take off. Still, thanks to the inventor for trying. Salads are definitely still hot these days, if not getting hotter. Companies like Mad Radish and Sweetgreen are just getting started with a salad craze epidemic. So you can't really count McDonald's out of the game just yet. Game on. Mix spaghetti and mix supersize. But for some reason, I can't stop tasting this delicious sauce. Oh. For diehard fans, the taste buds seem to be saying, it's my tongue and I'll cry if I want to. Despite McDonald's shelving early plans like the mixed spaghetti, for instance, some quarters of society just cannot be prevented from still craving for what they secretly or not so secretly want. And so, in true Hunger Games fashion, the mixed spaghetti is still served in the Philippines. In the land of more than 7,000 islands and around 104 million Filipinos, the taste buds just won't be denied. And so, as of first 2016 sightings, the mixed spaghetti is still very much around in these parts unknown, to borrow a term from the late CNN superstar Anthony Bourdain. That's awesome. That's what you do with the brown stuff. My heart goes out to deep-fried apple pie aficionados as it's been replaced by the baked McDonald's apple pies, of course, and for a long time now. However, nothing can stop you from putting the official and baked version in the deep frying pan if you want to. The only problem is, the finished product probably won't have that iconic, bubbly complexion that the original version sported during its heyday. Just saying. And what about mixed supersize? The idea has been abandoned since that Super Size Me documentary aired, forever putting a stop to the most convenient way to pig out when you've managed to starve yourself for a week or when you have a construction job in the morning. Hello, healthy eating. But sorry, sometimes the mouth just knows what it wants. <laughs> 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 Burger King Satis Fries are just the start. The games have just begun. Burger King is the next guiltiest player in the fast food rejects arena. Just like beauty, taste is in the taste buds of the tongue owner. So the final arbiter is still you, or what appeals to your palate. Still, Burger King handily comes up on our list as the second biggest home of fast food failures. Just think Burger King Satis Fries, BKA1 Halloween Whopper, BK Dinner Baskets, BK Bacon Ice Cream Sunday, BK Shake 'em Up Fries, BK Cine Minis, and you get the idea. Indeed, Burger King is almost as bodacious as the Big Yellow Arches. What is that? The Golden Arches. It's a way to make the place stand out. Huh. And that, folks, is when it comes to churning out bold moves to galvanize the teeming masses of hungry people around the world. Someone just needs to take the cudgels for people with singular, if not weird, tastes or appetites, and Burger King seems all too happy to oblige. Oh. Hey, hey, look, it's not about a few fries. It's about what the fries represent. Taco Bell, Zesty Chicken, Border Bowl, and more. We are going to give you the complete Taco Bell experience. Taco Bell is up next in the fast food rejects ladder. What's up with all these in denial states? Sometimes fast food companies just try too hard at being what they're not. To illustrate, Mickey D's tries to be health conscious and ends up failing miserably at the task. But just like I said earlier, you can't fault anyone for trying. And that's because you need to keep trying in order to succeed. But how much you can take and keep moving forward? That's how winning is done! The Taco Bell Zesty Chicken Border Bowl was meant for all the salad lovers out there. Unfortunately, TB missed its target with some people finding the salad too expensive. Or maybe Taco Bell fans were really looking for the taco shell in this one. Not finding any, it was only a matter of time before they dropped the TB innovation like a hot potato. And what was going on with the Taco Bell brownie sandwich? Wasn't that an eye candy to begin with? Well, it was really sweet, what with the fudge cream frosting center. However, before you start thinking that what brought it down was more like the Krispy Kreme fiasco in Canada, there's a lot more to the issue than meets the eye. You probably guessed right. It was the cost of making the product that just didn't appeal to Taco Bell management. So out the door, TB brownie sandwich went. There's a door in here. Burger King Cupcake Sunday Shake. Can I have a vanilla sundae with hot fudge? And, uh... Sprinkles. Taco Bell isn't alone in the dessert flops arena. Burger King has guilty pleasures, too. Just think BK Cupcake Sunday Shake, that one fast food dessert that tries to be everything all at once, even a drink for that matter. Well, the fast food market doesn't roll that way, given the eggnog craving has gone universal. But not even Tinkerbell can save this one. Proof? Adding whipped cream and sprinkles didn't work like fairy dust. 
and it doesn't get better from here, it gets worse. Just consider Burger King's bacon ice cream sundae. The king definitely didn't listen to the experts at Ben & Jerry's when the battle-hardened ice scoopers there said that lacing ice cream with bacon or buffalo chicken wings was a really bad idea. It's like mixing an oatmeal business with dog food. The so-called halo effect or spell is broken. In fact, it becomes irreparable from pure marketing or advertising point of view. The Burger King Cine Minis failure is a lot easier to understand. Quite simply, Cinnabon came out and invented a better mousetrap, so to speak. It's a trap! Starbucks Unicorn Frappuccino. Starbucks yesterday unveiled their latest abomination. Too colorful, too soon? It's definitely one overdressed Starbucks cool drink. However, it's not really the overly colorful outfit that causes the trick to fail. For, as unicorn lovers would have it, the association with the mythical and non-existent animal was unwarranted. In fact, there are isolated reports that Katy Perry spat out her first taste of the Starbucks unicorn frappuccino. Apparently, not everything that glitters is gold for Starbucks. The beloved coffee company would have been forgiven had it not been for the reported awful taste of the drink. I wish I was dead. <laughs> If you're a Starbucks lover, you probably won't like the unicorn frappuccino next to your iced caramel macchiato or even the pink drink. It earns such a bad reputation that Starbucks management just wants to bury the memory under the sand like it never happened, just as there are no real unicorns out there. I have no idea how many unicorns they're grinding up for these things. Wendy's Frescata and Wendy's Super Bar. Welcome to Wendy's. Wendy's, the fast food company that invented the square beef patty, isn't exactly immune to the fail syndrome either. Caught in the act of the aping subway syndrome, Wendy's was quick to wash its hands of any frescata or deli sandwich lookalikes. And not only that, frescatas were also time-consuming to prepare. Acutely aware of how food preparation severely affects fast food profits, the firm also had to phase out the Wendy's super bar concept the same way that McDonald's had to get rid of the supersize menu quick. With Wendy's super bar around, customers spent way too much time customizing their meals. Had this persisted for a very long time? Without time, we don't exist. The fast food chain would have gone broke. Luckily, someone on the inside had the stroke of genius to turn the company around after going out of its tried and tested ways for a long time. The moral of the story? Just what we've been saying all along. Don't try to copy your neighbors. Be original and stick to your guns. There's a reason why so many people continue to seek out their square patties when craving a burger. Wow, effort. You deserve Wendy's. The Great Pizza Hut Priazzo and The Natural. It's time to eat pizza. Hello, Pizza Hut? Caught in the act, Pizza Hut is also guilty of fast food failures. It seems that nobody's ever immune to the disease, ever. What was that? Oh, I have a parasite. Robert Redford, be proud. There goes a pizza that's been named after one of his movies. However, Pizza Hut's The Natural didn't really last very long. And neither did the self-styled and deep-dish pizza of the company. Rumor has it that the beloved Pizza Hut Priazzo, with its thick skin and homemade goodness, took 40 minutes or so to prepare. Consider this. How many burgers do you think McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, or A&W can make in 40 minutes? There lies the rub. And Here's another quiz. How many fries can the fast food companies make in 11 minutes? That's apparently the time it took to make McPizza, Mickey D's foray into the Pizza Hut business. Luck was on Pizza Hut's side for that one, thank heavens. The bottom line is, nobody in the fast food business can wash their hands of fast food sins. But remaining are the unforgettable memories and cravings in consumer minds and taste buds that will never, ever be quenched. Thank you, Pizza Hut for testing out new low-fat skinny slices. Want to become an official Babble Topper? Yes. Let's do it. Just click on the join link in the description below for more details. And then stay right here. We've got loads more videos for you to check out. All you have to do is click.